What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking through Smite's history at some of the most OP items we've ever had to deal with. Hope you guys enjoy, let's get into it. First up on the list we've got Season 3 Soul Eater. Yeah, you, you heard me, one of the worst items in the game right now was once a dominant force in the ADC meta game. Soul Eater received a major overhaul at the start of Season 3 which rocketed it to the top of the tier list for lifesteal items, beating out Assy and Devil's Gloves by far. The first iteration of Season 3 Soul Eater had 30% attack speed and 20% lifesteal for 2000 gold. Seems fine, right? What's up here about that? Pretty cheap with some half decent stats, but we haven't got onto the passive of this item yet. His passive at the time was a sort of stacking effect that gave movement speed and lifesteal over 20 stacks, granting 10% lifesteal and 10% movement speed at full stacks, which gave the item 30% attack speed, 10% movement speed and 30% lifesteal and only required 20 stacks to get full stats. The passive also had a second effect. Whenever the user dropped below half of their HP, it healed them for 1% of their max HP per stack. So it healed for a fifth of the HP as a massive burst heal when they dropped below half. And this was on ADCs as well, which made it even more OP because it just gave them extra survivability and made them even harder to kill on top of the 30% lifesteal that already made them really hard to kill. Like you pretty much just lost every trade if the enemy had Soul Eater and you didn't because they just healed for like 300 HP when they dropped low on health and you, just, you can't really fight into that. This item pretty much ruined the ADC role as a whole while it was in its dominant stages and it was eventually reworked as it was impossible to balance it properly in that state. Speaking of stacking items that ruined the hunter role. Ever felt like you wanted to build Doomorb on a hunter? Well you could back in season 2. Heartseeker was the physical equivalent of Doomorb back then. You got some base power, some movement speed and it stacked up from minions and god kills. But the problem that made this item so insanely powerful was that, especially on hunters with the insanely cheap price tag at only 1950 gold, it was one of the cheapest tier 3 items in the game, allowing hunters to buy it really quickly and end up with 75 power at full stacks and some movement speed super early in the game. With the 100% scaling on hunter auto attacks, as you can imagine, this was pretty crazy adding 70 extra damage on each auto for such a cheap price. It made it one of the most OP items for hunters that we've ever seen. Whoa, we're on a roll with OP hunter items today. You know what guys, I think hunters don't get enough farm, so we need a way to get them to clear quicker and without using mana. This must have been got us going through Hyra's head when they decided to buff Golden Boat at the start of Season 4. This item gave hunters that easy access to AoE auto attacks which allows them to clear ridiculously fast while also using little or no mana to do so. Hunters could start with the tier 2 of the item throwing dagger and a few potions at level 1 and just clear stupidly quickly, making it one of the most OP hunter items to ever see play. It doesn't seem that OP on paper, but trust me, the AoE auto attack effect was way more powerful than it looks. Anyone who played when this cancer was in the game will tell you it was one of the worst times to play anything but ADC, because it was just ADCs dominating the game. Alright, I promise, we're done with hunter items for the rest of this list. At number 2 we've got Motivate and Turn Minions. I'm putting these two abominations together as they both served a similar purpose. They were both actives from back in close beta that involved tinkering with minions. We'll cover turn minions first since it was the first one to enter the game, plus it's the coolest of the two in my opinion. It was a pretty simple relic but it was insanely powerful. As the name probably suggests, this active basically just took enemy minions that were near you and made them fight for you. So you could just buy this a level 1 and have two full minion waves to push in a tower at the first wave. This was even crazier back then since it was much harder to clear minions. And the active also had a passive that gave all friendly minions around you plus 20 protections. So you could literally run into a tower with 12 buffed minions and do whatever the fuck you wanted because if the enemy team tried to attack you they just fell faster than fucking Tom and Baratheon. On to more of it. Probably the more OP of the two, though both were insanely strong. You know those super powerful fire minions that require you to put a ton of effort in to get them by taking a phoenix? Well, Motivate just basically takes a giant shit on those and gives you the ability to turn three nearby minions into fire minions permanently on a 90 second cooldown. But not only did it super buff the minions, it also full healed them. So good fucking luck trying to fight into a wave of six full health fire minions at level 1 when both duo landers by Motivate. If you thought Release Soul was good at taking towers, you better thank your lucky stars that Motivate wasn't a thing then. I could definitely see Release Soul taking a tower with just the first wave if this active existed. Before I get to number 1 spot, I'm just going to quickly mention Fatalis. It's not an official entry on the list, but I thought I'd mention it because a lot of people have really divided opinions on this item. Like, some people said it was the most OP shit to ever see play in the Hunter role, and some people said it was trash and just a crutch for bad players. But I just thought I'd throw it in as a quick mention. But moving on to number one. Finally, we've got Mannequin Scepter. You know, Bluestone Pendant's a pretty fun and balanced item, right? Well, how about we take that, add a slow onto it, and allow it to proc on every single auto attack that you fire? 
Weldy, if you were, you would have Mannequin Scepter if you did that. This item was a starter item that costed 800 gold and was introduced in the Season 2 PTS client, though it never really made it through the first round of changes, which is astounding considering Heiser's tendency to not fucking change anything out of PTS. It basically applied a stacking slow on targets up to 24% and did a dot on every auto attack similar to Bluestone Pendant. So it was basically Frostbound Hammer with a dot effect at level 1. This item basically made the game unplayable at the time as anyone with the item just needed to land one auto attack and then hold W and left click and walk down an entire team. It basically just led to insane amounts of snowballing and the game was basically decided on who built the most mannequin scepters and won the jungle fire level 1. Thanks for watching, leave a comment if you're around to play with some of these items when they were in their prime and be sure to subscribe if you want more of this type of video in the future. That's about it, peace out nerds.